Hi, friends. I'm Lauren. And I'm Katie. Welcome to OK, But Did You Know, a podcast where we talk about our favorite media with a friend who's never seen it before. Normally, this is where we would give you a breakdown for the TV episode that we are talking about today, but we thought this might be a good place to have a stop special moment uh, and have a chat about media as a whole. Uh, So today, rather than talking about either Once Upon a Time or Bob's Burgers, we are going to be talking about some topics that are really important to us when it comes to media and online spaces, uh, which are media literacy, digital literacy, and internet etiquette. So before we do get started, uh, we do want to say that the goal of this episode is, as well as to entertain, is to educate as best we can. Um, There are some parts of this that will turn into a lecture on Lauren's part, and she's not going to apologize, even though she wants to. Um, (laughs) But No sorries. No sorries. They're not allowed here because we we, we all signed up for this. Um, But no, the two of us both grew up in a much different internet environment than what's available today. And we feel like we have a media podcast, so there's really no better place than here to talk about something mm-hmm. that's as important to us as media literacy and fandom spaces. And I have to say, you said you're saying that we, you know, we grew up in a different for uh, anyone listening. I'm 30. Yeah. So that's the different internet we're talking about. I'm older than Google. We are millennials. We are older than Google. <laughs> we're older than Google. Um. So it's been it's been a ride. It's. Internet's it's been a time. It's been great. Some would say. Uh, some some would say. Some would say. Uh, I do also want to add, as we say, this is the education thing. And if you want, if you listen to our other episodes, usually if we reference videos or something, we like to put links into our show notes. Um, I've forgotten <laughs> half the things we've talked about. Um, but uh, I actually have a master's degree in library science, so I'm a big fan of looking for reliable sources and citing my sources. Uh, so any links, any articles, any videos that do get referenced or mentioned will be available in our show notes. And, and this is why Lauren is my friend, because <laughs> I would do that too. I'm a homeschooling mom. So like I find research is very important. Very, very important. I have a master's degree in research, basically. <laughs> I commend you, man. It, it, was, it was a time. You know, I, I enjoyed my time, but I'm glad that I'm done. So just to start us off, a few definitions for those who do not know. Um, Both of these are pulled from, again, reliable sources with links provided. Um, We're talking about media literacy. Media literacy, as defined by the Center for Media Literacy, uh, is a framework to access, analyze, evaluate, and create and participate with messages in a variety of forms from print to video to the internet. So media literacy is taking in media in all its forms and understanding it, but also really picking it apart for validity's sake. Like if you're looking for reliable sources for uh, for a paper for school, or you're just looking for more information on, on a topic that you saw in the news, it's taking in all of those at the same, it's all of that different type of media, for lack of a better term, and understanding, understanding it, not just what it's about, but also what went into it and also what it could be saying. And additionally, uh, internet literacy or digital literacy means having the skills that you need to live, learn, and work in a society where communication and access to information is increasingly through digital technologies like internet platforms, social media, and mobile devices, which is very important to us as we are two friends who have started a podcast and communicate solely through digital formats because we live in two very different states. We met through TikTok. We did meet through TikTok. Which is very interesting because we're going back to MySpace days... (laughs) Uh, not being allowed to have a MySpace to start with, but uh, in our, I was never allowed. I wasn't allowed. I snuck one for a little while, but then it just didn't feel worth it. Mm-hmm. That's um, fair. But going back to like, I remember when I made my Facebook. I, I was in high school, uh, but going back to like those days where our parents were like, "Don't, don't meet anybody on the internet." Yeah, that's all we do now. Well, it's like that's the thing with like it's the it's the funny thing about how the internet changes. It's like you know, or just life in general. Because so much of what we heard growing up was, you know, like, don't talk to people you don't know on the internet. Don't get into strange people's cars. Hello, Uber, please order a strange person's car through the internet. <laughs> directly to your door. Exactly. Like, directly to where you're standing. And so. if you're a large enough city, there's also ride share. So you're then getting into an entire vehicle with multiple different brands of stranger. Yeah. Like, it really is funny how our society just changes. 
But because that, that's, I mean, that's the topic of today is just how these things have kind of gone on. And a lot of the internet etiquette section of this, um, I'm pulling from a variety of different fandoms, um, mainly because these ideas are perennial. People act the same way online all the time. It's not new. Yeah. Um, but my my big thing when it comes to media and everything, because I mean, I'm, we met through TikTok. A lot of people spend a lot of time on social media. That's where they get their news. Um, I spend way too much time on TikTok. <laughs> I, oh, so do I. I. I've turned off the thing on my phone that gives me my screen time because I, I don't. I don't need to know you can that. Turn that off. At least it doesn't. At least it doesn't. It doesn't give me a notification every week. Okay, I need to turn that off because um, I, I know do. I'm not having good practices. Okay, I'm depressed. Yeah, I, don't, I, I don't, know this. I don't need that. It's fine. Nope. So, um, the thing with, uh, with uh, the thing with online media and validity is more, more and more really. Um, sources aren't unbiased. I mean, to be fair, no, no new sources is completely unbiased. No. That's just, I'm sure there's graphs and things of like the biases of different media outlets. Yeah. There, there's a pretty big graph out there and it, it literally shows up like all four corners of the spectrum mm-hmm. of, um, that, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> words are escaping me, it's fine. but it definitely shows. And I think like the closer, like you can get kind of close to the middle i think like npr is fairly close to the middle but then yeah. a lot of people will tell you that the, a lot of people believe that no npr is really liberal mm-hmm. um i think it's also just how things are worded yeah so it's it's interesting to look into yeah but like it's the thing like we were taught like i took a journalism class in high school was like you know that good journalism is unbiased and like there is literally, there's no such thing as unbiased journalism. It doesn't. There is an, it, yeah. It doesn't exist. inherent biases from all, like, it depends on who even the journalist is as a person. Yeah. You have your inherent biases. Like, you can't completely rid yourself of all bias. Exactly. Like, even if, like, someone did cite sources from all places, like, you know, we always, mm-hmm. uh, cause I, I can, my, my current, my, my most recent degree is in library science. My bachelor's degree is also in, in English education. So, you know, citing your sources is big for me. You know, something that we taught uh taught students in like you know in persuasive writing is like you're like acknowledge the other side like that's how kind of how you show validity to your stances you know you do it you still still acknowledge the other side most news media does not do that if they do that they do it in a very bad way so it's definitely something that needs more attention when it comes to media literacy education because like i feel like this is a it's a systemic problem where we predominantly like especially with the younger generations, I feel like our generation's the last one that got really comprehensive digital education, I feel like, because yes. we grew up with so much of the technology. It changed so much while we were in grades K through 12. And like we started off with brick phones and ended with smartphones. Yeah. Like, let's look at the, the computers that we used as, as school went on. Like, when I was in elementary school, I, I can't remember kindergarten or first grade, but second grade, we had, like, the big, like, the the clear max like the, the the blue bubble looking thing oh yeah like we had that that was the that was our computer lab by the time we got all the way by the time i got to 12th grade it was the the flat screen imac looking things like just oh, that man. that the, that in in 10 years like that's that's a massive shift in technology for just the computers so i was in sixth and seventh grade we still use we didn't have max our our district didn't have that much money Mm -hmm. um but we had your old old fashioned like the computer the the monitor itself was a brick Mm -hmm. like it looks like your old tvs yeah and everything ran on floppy disks yeah and i had to take keyboarding two years in a row and you had the cover that Mm -hmm. went over your keyboard so you couldn't look at the letters you were typing and yeah i took two years of keyboarding we had computer safety. I took web design, like HTML down to like the mm-hmm. like that level of yeah. web design. And yeah, when I was in middle school, we we were still using floppy disks for all of our things. There you go. I'm old. Oh my god. We we really are. It's okay. Though. I wrote my first book I wrote my first ever book report in elementary school on a typewriter. Nice. So God. <laughs> So okay. I'm just showing my age right it's, now. I mean, you know, who who better to talk about digital literacy than people who grew up with that with the technology though? Because we really did. You know, it's oh yeah. Digital literacy, it's about it's it's a type of information comprehension, right? It's like it's you're taking in not just and I, I really I, I count digital literacy in with like, you know, media with media literacy and like mm-hmm. understanding and analyzing stories. Like not just not just like news and stuff like that or information that yeah. we're seeing online, but like 
the way we analyze these TV shows, the depths to which that I analyze these TV shows, that's a form of comprehension. Like, like it starts, like I just said, my first book report was written on a, a typewriter, but it was a book report I, yeah. in elementary school. That's when we started analyzing media. Yeah. Because then eventually we go into high school, we do our Shakespeare and our Odyssey and all those things. Yeah. That's where it starts. It starts with your English comprehension. Because mm-hmm. if you don't can't comprehend what you're reading, how can you comprehend everything and else? Analyze everything else. Yeah. Because like we're taught to analyze, understand, like you said, what we read in books and stories, and then understanding. You know, we're, we're understanding the tone or, you know, the thing of like, oh, what do you think the author meant when the door was blue? Like, the joke there they being... They thought the door was blue. They thought the door was fucking blue. Um, <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, the door, the door was fucking blue is what it meant. But, you know, when we're talking about TV shows, you know, there's so much more to... An- there's so much more information mm-hmm. there to analyze. Um, you know, it's not just the words that are being said. It's the actions that the actors are taking. It's the lighting choices. It's the music choices. There's so much that goes into it. A good example of that is the Kira Knightley Pride and Prejudice, mm. all the way down to the movement of Darcy's hand. Yeah. How much is portrayed in a literal hand movement? Yeah. Like that's down to like, oh man. Sorry, that's like that one moment in that movie that I think is the most popular and more people talk about more than anything else. Mm-hmm. And then we have all these other things that happen in life. And I'm like, y'all can get this from a hand movement in a movie but with an author that wrote it a long ass time ago that Mm -hmm. a lot of people honestly can't comprehend because it's not an easy book to comprehend but y'all can't get other things i actually have an edition of pride and prejudice it's one of my favorite books that the entire front of the book comes with maps and uh explanations of that time period what Mm -hmm. things mean all of that i think a lot of classic literature should come with that oh yeah Because then so many books would actually make sense to people because there's so many books out there that you start reading them and you're like, none of this makes sense. What do they mean? This is, what is this? What is that? Because other words mean other things in that time period. And you cannot, that's why I can't stand when people are like, you should read the classics. And I'm like, (laughs) no, you know how much studying has to come with reading the classics? People, it's, I mean, that goes into the whole, like, you know, one way of reading is morally superior to, to another, which yep. we will talk about later. Because, um, like, people that say that, like, they, they're like, oh, you should read, you're like, reading the classics is the only valid type of reading. And I'm like, okay. my, my response is usually, okay. Like, <laughs> that that is, that is your opinion, my friend. <laughs> like, if you want to, like, it's the thing, I think it's the joke of, like, why do men not read fun books for the most part? Because, like show me a man who had who who's an intense reader and i will show you also someone who has some kind of intense knowledge about the civil war for some fucking reason yeah because for some reason men only like this is this is a massive generalization I, I'm, I'm aware it's not all men but like men just like tend to read history books for no for mm-hmm. no apparent reason i'm just like you can read books that are fun they don't they don't have to be thousand page textbooks I have to say, I, I do have a very odd husband. He prefers science fiction. There you go. Which then sucks for me because then it's, you know, you should read this science fiction and I'm a fantasy reader. Mm-hmm. So I say that I've read some, some some science fiction that's really good, though. He's given me some good ones. Okay. Not Ready Player One. I have not read that. It's okay. So I enjoyed the book more than the movie okay um i think i more so what i get the enjoyment i get out of it is what i get to enjoy discussing with with my husband okay that's fair because like we're we're reading a non-fiction book right together right now he's mm-hmm. reading the audiobook and i'm reading the ebook of it gotcha um and we're getting to discuss it so like i do like my own little book club from time to time with my yeah. husband which is very good for a relationship i will say mm-hmm. like read with your partner it's so much fun yeah or even like, because like my part, we we don't for the most part like we have overlap in some of the books that we read. Like she's read mm-hmm. a handful of Katie Robert books. You no, know, she's she's read far more Ice Planet Barbarians than I have. Um, I have not read one of those yet. I read the first one. So I think she's read all the way through like up through like book four or something like that. Because um, they're on KU and she has that now and I don't. So like it's it's not it's not worth spending money on anymore. Um, but like we we have and we have overlap. There are some fantasy books that we've both read. But it's also just nice just read next like just read with like when you say read with your partner Mm -hmm. literally sit in the room you could be reading completely different books and every once in a while just like talk about what you're reading Mm -hmm. it's just it's a good bonding moment of like parallel play but also you're still communicating oh yeah it's so much fun it's a good time and relaxing yeah but reading is like but that's where it starts like when it comes to media literacy is 
it starts with reading. Yeah. Because you really it's it's not easy to take in other information if you're not processing things. And like and there's so many different forms of reading. We are audiobooks are reading over yeah, here. Absolutely. Because I don't know how people believe that's not reading. I know lights up the same part of the brain. It's it's the same story. It's the same story. Mm-hmm. Um, but like I was with basic comprehension. Like the, the I, I wrote down some examples from the, from our various shows because or from, from mm-hmm. various shows because it's, this it's a media podcast. I have to pull got to pull my ins, my my reasoning from somewhere. Um, like the example of with what happens with I realize this is coming out before we get to the episode in the way that it's aired. Uh, the episode uh, where Snow eats the poison apple and once upon a time we've recorded that already, but obviously this is coming out before that episode airs. But so uh, just yeah, so everyone's aware of the timeline. This episode's going to be out much closer to when it was recorded than everything else, which is a first. <laughs> which is a first, but it's because this doesn't need to be scheduled for like three months out. This can go out whenever. Um, I was saying basic comprehension of you know Regina getting her revenge on Snow, her forcing Snow to eat the poison apple because snow told core about their plan that's that that's basic comprehension one thing leads to cause and effect one thing leads to another and then core kill <clears throat> so snow told cora cora killed daniel regina gets mm-hmm. revenge on snow basic cause and effect like analysis but why did she blame snow logic would dictate that like if we think about this in real world logic she should blame her mother but why doesn't she there's more to be analyzed there and by not comprehending everything else that's going on with her character and everything else that's going on with all the different performances and everything else that the show is putting into this story, you're missing a chunk of it, really, if you're just focusing it on the very surface level, one thing leads to another comprehension level, which mm-hmm. is, you know, unfortunate. Um, but I will say when it comes to more online spaces, especially with text and with comment sections, it's very hard to tell tone based off of a comment alone. Um, like, you know, text and texting and commenting it does not imbue, like it, you you can use some level of critical thinking skills when it comes to like, did the person use emojis? What's their punctuation situation? Like what letters are capitalized? But then you also run into the thing of everyone texts differently and there's trends yeah. in text and the, it, context, cl- context got, clues, context, context clues only go so far with the were, context you actually are given. Exactly. Like if you're talking to a random person in a comic session, you have no context. You don't know how the person is. You mm-hmm. don't know what they're at. Like I had, I commented on someone's video agreeing. Like it was, it was the, it was the weirdest thing. The comment did stupidly well. The video, I did not anticipate the video getting like. I hate when my comments do better than my actual videos. That's all the time. Um, all the for time. For me, someone, someone, it was when people were finally understanding, um, the the part in love is an open door where uh he sings you oh and God. she says and i were just meant to be people are apparently just realizing this and i commented not in disagreement not in shaming anyone that didn't figure this out already was just yeah the whole song is basically an illusion and illusion with an a not an i um i that that is that is necessary they're different a, they're different words they're different that's a necessary thing to add on here um that you know that they're not meant to be that's something that commented and some people were like yeah some people were like and so i'm like okay i was just adding on to the comment um one person said what was wrong with what she said and at, at that point that was someone that i had i have a personal thing of i'm not going to comment back on people if i can't tell how well they are based on their tiktok mm-hmm. that person i could i could tell wasn't was at least over 18 i'm like okay so i said like oh, there's nothing wrong with it i just you know was nothing wrong with what she said it was just that you know i i'm adding on to it and the person was like, oh, I wasn't coming at you. I actually don't know what's going on in the video. I'm like, why don't you comment on the, vi- why, why'd you comment on my comment is my question. But my, my favorite was just someone commented, it's not an illusion. Spelled the same way I spelled it with a, with a crying face emoji. And it t- because I couldn't tell if it was a kid or not. I, I wanted to, but I didn't comment back. This is, this is back into the internet etiquette thing of sometimes you don't have to comment the things you think. I wanted to yeah. be like, are you sad because you don't know what the meaning of the word illusion is? <laughs> it, which it, it, which is not oh. nice, which is why I didn't do it. <laughs> it. And I think more people need to follow that. There's just so many times on the internet that I'm like, you know what? I reached 30 with never leaving a hate comment in my life. Yeah. Like it's that easy to just mm-hmm. swipe, to just ignore, to block. Yeah. And that's where the internet etiquette comes out is yeah. – have we ever truly had internet etiquette? It's like once you're behind that keyboard, a lot of people think no one can no one can do anything. Exactly. I'm behind a keyboard. Mm-hmm. But at the same day, like you can really affect someone's life 
like mental, like especially their mental health. It's the anonymity of the internet. People think they can do whatever they want. And it's like, you know, I was on Tumblr for a very long time. Same. An- a- anonymous uh, asks were very much a thing that, you know, I would see people get the the, the most ridiculous, like the, the most ridiculously hateful the comments. we have seen in like, our Tumblr days. You don't know what someone's good response is going to be to things. And I think I put out the, I always have, and I always, I, I maintain this. I usually put out that mentality of like, come at me, I dare you. So people don't send yeah, me those kind of, people don't send me those kinds of comments because they're not gonna get the response that they want. But like the second like people come from my friends, I'm like, I'm gonna, you know, come at me. Like I like see see what you can do. I've heard I it all. I love the block button. I love the block button. It's I'm my a, favorite thing. I'm a big fan of the block button. It's so amazing. And it works so well and it's fast and it's very zero effort. It really is. And you don't owe anyone an explanation for why you block them. You don't. You do not. And if you're upset somebody's blocked you, like, people are allowed to have boundaries. Yeah. You are it, – it, I don't know if it's, like, have we lost the human decency to be like, okay, someone has set this boundary. I should leave them alone. I think is we Is that have. gone? I think so because I think now – because this is something I say all the time about a lot of stuff. Um, just because you want to know the answer to something does not mean you are entitled to it. And if you really want an answer to something, Google exists. Yeah, like my my thing is more like with like people's reasonings yeah. or like with like opinions because like I and I'm still not going to talk about the whole thing on this podcast because it's truthfully not That's worth fine. it anymore. Um, the bad impression voiceover series that I do on the Once Upon a Time account, um, I very specifically have said that I personally will never do scenes that involve their version of Peter Pan for a multitude of reasons. A, I don't think I could do his voice very well because I don't think my voice and an 18 year old boy, I don't think that's really going to work so well. Mm. Um, but for personal reasons. I pers- I've had bad fandom experiences that involve fandom people, not the actor, not the show. Truthfully, nothing to do with the actual show. It's just people in fandom spaces that have seriously uh, altered the way I view the character. Like, the things that happened with those people have seriously altered the way I view the character. And I have a hard time watching that arc. So I just, I truthfully just won't, don't, I'm not going to watch those scenes over and over and over again to try and do a bad impression voiceover of them. And people are like, oh my god, what happened? And I'm like, this is the most explanation you're getting. Like, just because you would like an answer. Like, I, I I, am pushing right up against my boundary by telling, by answering people when they ask why and giving them even that much information. Because I, I eventually would... ask why for context? <laughs> yes, you I can tell when we're not recording. Thank you. <laughs> oh, gladly. I will. Yeah. D- hey, that's like, like we just said, that's a boundary you're putting. I'm yeah. just really curious as your friend. Yeah. Of like, what the fuck happened, man? You but- are a person that I trust. <laughs> Other people on the internet, just because you want the explanation does not mean you are entitled to it. Uh, that's my that's my big thing with the internet is sometimes you're just not going to get closure on things. You're just not going to find out why. It's just, it's just the nature of things. And while I understand having debilitating anxiety as one does uh, and needing closure for things, that doesn't mean you're entitled to it. Exactly. Like- you may really want it and get really anxious because you don't have it, but that mm-hmm. does not mean you're entitled to get it. Yeah. Sometimes you just got to move on. Exactly. And I'd like to go back to our conversation on context clues real quick. Ooh, yes. Context clues. Because, like, context clues in fan spaces and it, it, it goes beyond just comment sections because it, it goes into, into media as well because context clues are a big part of how we comprehend stories. And there's one thing on this on Once Upon a Time that... I want to yell from the rafters, context fucking clues. Anytime I see someone ask me a question about this, because the answer is not, is not complicated. It's not complicated. There okay. are, there are two characters that you have not met yet who have the same name. One is named after the other. Okay. Um, and kind of like our Henry and Henry situation. Kind, yeah. Kind of like our Henry Henry situation. That that time I, I usually make sure to say Henry senior, because to be fair, Henry Henry without context can be confusing. These two, yeah, not so much, not so much, because one one is an adult human being, one is a baby. Oh my! The amount of times I've gotten asked if, when saying that saying this baby is such and such is bro- is, is that such and such's brother, they for some reason think that means that the adult is her brother, and therefore part of that family thing. And I'm just like, context. Context clues. I want to say things, but I can't because it will spoil certain things for you. Yeah, I'm um, so confused right like, now. But like, I'm meant to be confused. You're meant to be confused. I, I hopefully whoever's listening understand. If they've seen One Spawn Time, they understand the the adult baby situation that I'm talking about. It's from it's from the end of season three. Like, is when the, is when the baby comes into. So I'll see it eventually. You'll it's see it fun. soon. We'll get there. But it's there are no situations where basic context clues would not tell you that if they if this name is being used in reference to a baby, 
it's a different character than the adult. If you're There's, like clearly stating that it is the child character and not the adult character, then yeah, that tells you exactly what you need to know. There are no, there's no confusion in my mind. Like basic, basic context clues. That's but, like saying Henry got on the school bus. I don't think it's Henry Senior. Exactly. Like it's 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 stuff like that. So I'm like, I will put some of this into maybe I, I can put this fault into our education system. Maybe we're not teaching children context clues. I don't know. I can tell you, apparently, we're also not teaching people literal figures of speech. This is just something that I've now come up with. Um, in I, I, I do enjoy saying literal figures of speech. That's a, that's a nice combination. Oxymoron there. Yeah. Because um, as I've now kind of plopped myself basically into the has-been hotel fandom, I'm seeing a lot of things are very perennial. A lot of mentalities about i guess mess missing things is common and the example and like people the justification of people missing these figures of speech is well the fandom is literal like it's a lot of the fandom are literal children which the show is 16 plus they're not that they shouldn't be that young i'm not i obviously i don't police with they people. should know some of this by now but like the examples i'm gonna give are from a song in the finale i'm just gonna use lyrics out of context um That's fine. you know one character says he needs to unclip his wings People being like, so people are now taking that as uh, as a uh, an illusion or, or a, a you know a clue that he's actually a fallen angel. We're like, are, are we looking at the same character? Unclip his wings as he's talking about a deal that he's enthralled in. It's just referencing he wants to be free. It doesn't mean that yeah. he's a fallen angel. That's not. Well, you how said th- clip your wings, and I thought freedom. Exactly. Um, or as another character says that he ran away with his tail between his legs. Please tell me you've heard of this figure of speech before. Yeah. Meaning that he's scared, defeated. That's what a dog does when they're scared. They put their tail between their legs and they run away. So tell me why people are arguing that his character design doesn't have a tail. Like, the amount- are you fucking with me? No. <laughs> people don't get that? No, apparently not. Yeah. So apparently, uh, our education system- Needs to do better about teaching. Because, like, I, I can only speak from my experience. And I'll admit, I had a fairly well-funded school education. By 16... Do you have pet dogs? I, I had dogs. I had a but dog. Do they, though? Do they, <laughs> them, I don't, I don't know. But by 16, I understood how to decipher figures of speech. Yeah. So, like... Which um, which bleeds nicely into our next topic of opinions are subjective. Figures of speech so not... so happy I homeschool. Right? Figures of speech not so much, but opinions are subjective. Opinions are subjective, and your opinion is not always right. Um, but I can tell you, my analysis of saying he ran away with his tail between his legs does not mean he has a tail. I'm pretty sure I'm right there. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's... Oh, what's the word for it? Because brain fog. Um, it's a metaphor. It's a metaphor. Thank you. God. It's a metaphor. I knew what it was. Mm-hmm. I know what a metaphor is. I Fair. Brain fog. For yep. anybody who knows, um, my brain doesn't work the same right now. It's fine. We're, we're just gonna let's blame my heart. Let's just go. With let's that do. Right let's now. go with that. Yeah. Um. Let's blame my heart. Uh. Is yeah. And like metaphors, like you usually start off with cause and effect, and then move into to metaphors and similes. So I'm kind of like, I don't know what we're teaching. Y'all didn't learn this in like middle school. Apparently not. I I don't know like, what we're teaching kids anymore. I'm not in education anymore. I say that as a parent who's homeschooling a fourth grader and she hasn't really gotten to that yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we've done cause and effect. Okay. Which is the most basic one you can do. That's Cause reasonable. and effect. Yeah. That's reasonable. Metaphors and similes, I think she's getting there. Yeah, I would say that's probably like probably more like fifth, sixth grade. Yeah, we're getting we're, – we're not there yet, but she's mm-hmm. working on a lot of writing right now. Okay. And so with, uh, with writing, she's having to learn um, just all your different forms of writing, like mm-hmm. – uh, all right, English teacher, help me because my brain's not working. Oh, like persuasive writing? Like your different Persuasive. Sti- That's the word I couldn't figure out. Persuasive. Motherfuck. Your different styles okay. of writing. It's different <laughs> styles of writing. Thank you. I am a homeschool mom. I literally do this. It's fine. So uh, do I want to know your um, experience that you've had recently with opinions are subjective? I mean, I don't really have that many of them. It's it's a lot of like it's it's being on TikTok and being in the fandom space on TikTok, and predominantly what I post is analysis because my account started as me figuring out the timeline, which is entirely analysis. But as I've also stated previously, it's it's an educated guess. It's not a science. Um, but like opinions are subjective, and this is something that I've I for a while did like 
make this the I had I had to put this in every video because I was getting people's argue like people arguing with me like vehemently because my opinion was different than theirs. Like it's opinions. They're not right or wrong. Like unless a creator has come out and said that you know X means Y and then then no one is right or wrong. Analysis yeah. and interpretation and opinion are all subjective. Like, you know, you and I watch the same TV shows for this podcast. You know, we we've read a lot of the same books. Two people can you know, watch the same show, listen to the same song, read the same book, and come away with two vastly different opinions and takeaways. And I find that to be a wonderful thing about media. Oh, and yeah. people with the combativeness that is, and the, you know, singularity that their individualisticness, I think you said, about being online makes it almost like if someone is different than me, then they must be wrong. Like, no, that's not how that is. That's not how that works. I feel like it's this inter interesting mixture between you have this like sense of individualism mm -hmm. that we have in this day and age, which yeah. I don't feel like we had it as much when we were younger. Yeah. Um, while yes, you are special because you are you does not make you entirely unique. There are a million people just like you out there. Yeah. Um, but with that, a lot of people, like we have already admitted ourselves, are chronically online. Yeah. So when someone tells you, that makes me then go, real, not, now I'm having the realization, realization that if you tell someone to touch grass, not everybody's going to understand what the fuck you mean. Yeah. Um, which hurts my brain even more. Mm. By the way, guys, that means go outside. Exist I mean, in reality. It means please. step away. And I, I, I'm, I'm aware, again, that this is rich coming from two people that are running an entire media platform through computers. Yes. But walk away from your computer or your phone. Honestly, I like to take the weekends off from social media. That's I've started doing that and I highly, highly recommend it because it puts you back in reality because I do. I have too high of screen time. Yeah. Um, and it makes you realize I, – I don't know what it is about getting off of social media even if it's for short breaks. Mm -hmm. It just makes you realize like that's a human being you're bullying. That's yeah. a human being you are subjecting to your vitriol. Like – you don't like that's not just some like and that's not yeah. an npc no it's people not. are not npcs like one time i posted a video uh it was one of like the the filters that like rolls through the people and eventually pauses on somebody yeah. i did a smash or pass it was the once upon a time main cast of course it was it was i was genius i thought it was a bob's burgers one it was so much without fun. the kids in it yeah um I need to make a. I feel like between the ones that I've seen, I need to try and make my own because between the ones that I've seen, I feel like we're missing. Like, there's one that's all main characters and one that's like a lot of side characters. I'm like, I think we're missing mm -hmm. like the people in between that are like recurring people that come back, but not the point. Um, I jokingly said at the beginning of the video that I think there's a few automatic passes, but most of the, most of the cast are smashes where there's like one or two passes, and one of them was Rumpelstiltskin. And I said at the very big pass to pass like he's I, I get it but like no but no, I you. um at the very beginning of the video I said if what I say is different than what you would say that is because we are different people with different opinions I say that like almost word for word in the video and someone commented oh my god how could you smack how could you pass on Rumpelstiltskin and I commented back I invite you to watch the video again and listen very carefully to what I say about opinions like you said at the beginning, like did they just ignore that part. I think so. Yeah, like opinions. I did that before. I think I I said smash or pass to anything. I'm like that. That was while the first thing was rolling. I say that, and I'm like, because opinions are subjective, and I'm a different person than you. Mm -hmm. Like that's why. And like I, Rumpelstiltskin. I mean, a, a the cast is all very attractive. I, I I if Robert Carlyle is your type, I it's no no hate. Don't truthfully do not Everybody's care. Everybody's got a different type. Everyone's like... a different type. I don't care. But like I, I also don't like the character. But he's also just not. By type for a multitude of reasons, and that same person commented in a different video of mine because I did a bad impression voiceover that heavily featured Rumpelstiltskin. It was also heavily featured other characters that are really the reason why I did the video. Yeah. But they commented like, "How could you do a video that heavily focuses on a character you don't like?" And I'm like, "Because liking the character and enjoying the performance are different things." Yeah, and then the the same person it is it's the same now. The thing about it, it's the same person every time. I also did a um a fuck Mary kill with that same filter. And I and I landed on Rumpelstiltskin and I did kill without thinking. It was it was great timing. And they went, "Oh my god, how would you possibly kill the dark one?" And I'm like, "It's just a game. It's not that deep." I mean, that's like I don't like Jimmy Pesto, but I still love Bob's Burgers. Like it's it's not it's it not exists. it's not that deep. It's not that deep. So oh my it's just, goodness. It's that it's that combativeness when your opinion is different than somebody else's that mm -hmm. I don't really, and I don't personally understand it. Anti-fandoms are not a thing that 
I personally understand. Anti-fandoms and intentionally picking fights, I, I don't get it. Like, I, I, I truthfully don't. And like, I think most people are just, they're hardwired to assume maliciousness. I'm sure that the person was just trying to understand, but it's just the fact that they did that in multiple videos over a very short amount of time, that it felt malicious. Yeah. And I have no context. I don't know how this person operates. I don't know. I think eventually I did end up, I think I did eventually end up blocking them because I just, I couldn't anymore. It was just, it was every, well, then you it was every video. It was yeah, every video like, that was negative towards Rumpelstiltskin they were commenting on. I'm like, what? And if you're a fan, that's fine. That doesn't mean you have to say anything. Yeah. Like, I've never understood putting your energy behind something you heavily dislike. Anti-fandoms are very much a thing. I don't, I truthfully don't, I, I don't understand putting so much energy into disliking something when you can put the same energy into liking something or well, having- Have you met male Star Wars fans? I mean- I mean- Just say it. <laughs> I try to avoid them at all costs, honestly. Same. Like, it's a bit much. But, like, Ugh. people are so hardwired for maliciousness and gatekeeping and all this other stuff. Because there, I mean, there, to be fair, there's a lot of gatekeeping in a lot of fandoms. Oh, um, it's everywhere. But like with the people, some I saw a video the other day uh, of someone because Hasman Hotel is not new. I I I I'm, I fully admit I have very much. I like the TV show on Prime is new, but like oh, okay. I joined the fandom last week. I fully admit this. I am a brand new person. I'll be I, joining soon. Apparently, I don't. I don't pretend to be an expert on the show. I've just watched the series that we have multiple times and listened to the soundtrack an unhealthy amount but um the pilot originally was uh created independently on youtube with the creator um oh. so in 2019 so it's it's been a long a long time coming so people have been with this fandom for a long time with very little content of just kind of what's been popped in here and there and um i don't if you've heard uh the song uh you, you may have heard the sound at some point on tiktok it's like Hello, it's nice to meet you. I don't yes. know where I am. That is written for one of the characters of of Hasman Hotel, oh. part of like the independent section, which like that makes sense. Um, so someone made a video or a comment pointing out that oh, it's funny. A lot of people don't know that this was originally for the character of Alistair, and everyone people are like coming at them with like calling them a gatekeeper and all this other stuff. They're like, I'm literally just pointing out that it's an original song i'm not saying you can't be a fan if you don't know that who hurts you like that's really yeah like what that's the mentality people assume that pointing out something is gatekeeping like did anyone say that you can't be a fan if you didn't know that i didn't know that till the other day maybe this is you just being informed of it yeah like like informing people is not saying that you can't be a fan if you don't know this like that gatekeeping is the intentionally like I, I would know, like, would you consider yourself a fan of Once Upon a Time at this point? Yes. There you go. That, that And you've seen all the way through the third episode of season two. And I have to ask, like, is it, have I not seen enough yet to be allowed to be a fan? I think you, I think you can consider yourself a fan after the pilot, after the like, first minute. It's the same for you, Bob's Burgers. Yeah. Like, like, pretty sure you're a fan. You finished three seasons officially. Yeah. Like, I would not, anyone is a fan, if they consider themselves a fan of something because there's media that they like, I would consider them a fan. That's- it brings me back to Star Wars, too, because, like, there's probably people that would not consider me and my husband fans of Star Wars for the simple fact we have not watched all of the TV shows. There's too many there's, of them. There's too many. Thank you. There's too many. Never even them. finished The Mandalorian. Do we have a Mandalorian Funko Pop? Yes, we do. Mm-hmm. Have we finished Mandalorian? No. There you go. Like, I've got a bunch of book series that I have not finished that I, I would consider myself a fan of the book series. Like, mm-hmm. that's just... You don't need to have seen an entire piece of media because like you're telling people like for shows that are ongoing, like, oh, you haven't seen the episode that aired an hour ago? You're not a real fan. Like, what? It's, That's not how that works. I'll never understand. That's just not how that have works. Have I just kept myself out of these spaces? <laughs> Probably. I unfortunately thrust myself into them. So like, these are all fandom story times that I will probably bring up again as we go through the ones by the time t- stories mm-hmm. because like they, most of them relate to a specific episode or a specific time period, but- Oh boy, do they come up here? Um, Because like the gatekeeping of certain things and just like, I don't, I don't get it. Like it's, it's It's not a spoiler. Like, it's not like you're trying to keep back spoilers because you don't know where someone's at. 
Like, that's not the same thing. Exactly. Like, I, I what I don't like, especially, is people intentionally spoiling things for people. Like, you can hear the, the way that I talk about things on the podcast. I, I, I really try to make sure that I'm not spoiling anything for you unless it's something that's, like, not very important or mm-hmm. won't show up for a very long time. Like I was saying about the context clues naming situation before. And, like, Cora um, coming back in a certain episode, that's not going to ruin it for me. Like, oh, cool, Cora's coming back. Like, exactly. Like, I was, you know, I mentioned that ro- that we're going to see a flashback of, of young Cora that's played by Rose McGowan. Like, that's not a, that's not a f- spoiler. Like, God, the, don't even get me started on that right now, though. Like, <laughs> a lot of stuff has come out with Charmed uh-huh. this past, like, month. Yeah, I know. With the cast. And I'm just like, I don't care. Yeah. It was 25 years ago. Exactly. Like I, I do my best when I when I post content. Like and not not talking about video, not talking about plot points because at that point it's just commentary. And my 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 statute of limitations on spoilers is like once the final episode has been has been out for at least a year. That's usually my statute yeah. of limitations on spoilers. However, as I said, I have a series where I dub myself over scenes from the show. I'm just it's I mean it's my voice, but it's scenes full stop on screen. Mm-hmm. I do put the episode code on screen. It that. I, I still avoid your TikTok. That's yes. that's totally fair because they never know what I'm talking about. Well, if I if I see yours, if I watch even like too much of just one of your videos, don't pops, like it at all. It pops up on your feed. More once upon a time videos will pop up in my feed. Yeah. And so I have to avoid it like the plague mm-hmm. or I'm sitting there like I don't want to be spoiled. I'm not far enough. I'm only in season two. I was like – where we probably had one of the worst spoilers that could have happened almost happened to me. Yeah. I'm not having – nope, I'm not doing it. You handled it very well. but it, I did. I freaked out too. <laughs> I was like, no. I screamed when you told me that. But it's just, it's, that part is really, like, people intentionally spoiling things and just, like, stop. Like, let people enjoy things at their pace Mm -hmm. if you can. Accidents happen. We get that. But it's just, you gotta really, you gotta try. Stay in your lane. Just stay in your lane. Exactly. Stay in your lane. And, like, not involve people that aren't, you know, meant to be involved in things. You know, another one of my very problematic fandom behaviors, I think we talked about this on a Bob's episode that'll be out at some point. Um, about aging up canonically children characters for the sake of fan fiction, and I'm just like, I don't even care if it's if it's a cartoon. I don't care. No. Please stop aging up children. No, it's very weird. Don't like it. Not a fan of it. Mm-mm. Like I very intentionally did not. I at one in the once upon time RP fandom. Again, this is not really a spoiler because time moves forward. In season seven, yeah. in season seven, Henry is played by an adult. His character is aged. I was about up. to say, by then he should be played by an adult. He's very, very. It's very much aged up at that point. That's fine. But up until that point, he was only a child. And if people had aged up versions of him, I did. I not even like in no context did I write with them. None whatsoever. So it no, that feels weird after watching six seasons of him being a child. Why would you want to? No, like, once, once we were in season seven, and he there was an, there was a canon adult version. Sure, go ahead. I don't care. But That's fair. I guess for me personally, yeah. like opinions are subjective. Exactly, I wouldn't be able to. Exactly, but I'm a parent. Like it just feels weird. Opinions are subjective, and like th- so much of like my problematic things are from the fandom, for, from the fan fiction aspect of things. And like this is kind of the part where like Lauren's going to kind of go into lecture mode a little bit, just because I have a lot of examples of fan fiction and fandom things, and it's a problem. But one of the biggest things, and this really does kind of bleed into bookish spaces as well, because you know we the yes. thing about um about MLM, you know, a Killian romance is written by women and all that okay, stuff. Okay, I was about to say, I'm like, are we into MLMs now? Because no. that'd be a really interesting conversation. Unfor- unfortunately not, no. But um, in fanfics, <laughs> in fanfics, when the way that they make their, you know, their homosexual ship sail, the way that I phrase it, it's by killing off the, uh, the canon women that are with them on the show. And I'm like, can we be a little sneakier about our fetishization a little bit? Just a, just a tiny just bit? Just a little. Like, just, just a little. There are other ways to get your characters together. Alternate universe exists. But, uh, but yeah, just, just hide your fetishization just like a tiny, tiny bit. Just just a little. The littlest, littlest bit. And I mean, shippers are... Phantom spaces, fan fiction and phantom spaces are just breed the weirdest... The weirdest fucking people. Um, oh, very, very And I, I say that lovingly as a fan fiction person myself. Like, okay. Look, we can't say we're not weird. We have an entire podcast talking about two singular shows. Yeah, no, this is fair. Um, but in depth. In depth. But, like, my thing with, like, again, fan fiction, you know, the, the Achillean ships are just re- regular, you know, mm-hmm. shipping of things. We, If you've listened to our episode about... Um, 
uh, once upon a time 110, we had a, a short conversation about RPF and um, we are bringing that back because that's problematic as hell. Um, this is real person, sh- real person shipping. And it's just, it's the mentality of shipping the actors, not just their characters, mm-hmm. which I, I say again, I'm not ship shaming anybody. I'm not fix shaming anyone. If you are writing this and in your own, la- staying in your lanes, like I said before, staying in your lane, your fan, your fandom lane, your bubble, just stay with you and your friends. It's fine. When you involve the actors in ways that they didn't consent to, that's when I'm just like, what the fuck are we doing? Um, these are real people. These are real people. And it bleeds into other things. Like and one of the videos that I pulled up before as was an example was Lana from a convention. Someone, someone asked her if she thought that if, if she thought that Regina thought like if like her, would she, would she think the character thought that Emma's love interest as the show goes on was good enough for her? And she starts to say basically yes she like she may not like the character but like the regina may not like the character but you know she's seen that he's grown the audience starts booing her because the audience is full of swan queen people she she says she's like okay you may not like my answer but that's okay it's still my answer do you want to answer it or do you want me to answer it and the moderator was like "Ooh, good like drop the mic good moment moderator was proud of her it just brought to mind you know the my page is not a democracy i am the senate like you asked her a question respect the answer whether you like it or yeah. not and you know rpf to me just it people have asked lana and jen at conventions a lot about their dynamic and their relationship and it, th- there's a reason why they don't go to the same conventions anymore it's because that keeps happening you're like all those fans are wrong it's spoon queen or die exactly like <laughs> Spoon Queen is the superior ship here. Come on, people. Yes. But like And there's no harming in that because it's it's one person and an inanimate object. It's just a person and a spoon. It's a spoon. But like I found I found a clip that I've been that I've been referencing before. Uh someone asked what asked Lana what it was like working with her, and her response is basically that they had a good working relationship, that they didn't hang out that much, you know, while the show was going on. Their lives were in different places, but they had a really good working relationship, and that's okay. On some jobs, there are people you take with you and people who mm-hmm. are just kind of along for the ride. And that's kind of it. And I, I'd sent you the video of Lana and Bex being not yes. straight for two minutes at all. It's hilarious that that's Bexana is Rebe- Lana and Rebecca Mater. And it's just, it's the two of them. I mean, they, they lean into it, but like they, they left with like a lifelong friendship. Lana is aunt Lana to, mm-hmm. I know all of her, to her kids. Like watching that was really fun though, because like I'm sitting there and I'm like, if Lauren and I were ever in person together, this would be us. Absolutely. If you ever and we do this through text. If like you, if you need an example of what the two of us are like, it's There's wa- your example. Watch watch interviews of Lana Perea and Rebecca Mater because it's the two it's the two of them. It's you know, someone asked a question like what would uh what was it like what what kind of partner would you pick for the other at, at the time lana was married and and bex was engaged i think or just with her now husband and like mm-hmm. a lot of stars describing someone and, and like bex goes with red hair and blue eyes and who sings all the time like it's like it's like <laughs> it's you know it's like I don't, I don't want anyone else i want you like it's it's, it's adorable yeah. the two of them are hilarious but like they play into the dynamic of their friendship but i i get that like when you see relationships like that that form it makes the ones that didn't form a little more, like e- even more noticeable because you would expect yeah. it, but not everyone is going to be the best of friends. Like well, gen- at the end of the day, it's a job. At the end, like, of, Exactly. At the end of the day, it's a job. You don't always walk away with best friends from every job. That's just not, and yeah. you, you don't walk away as best friends with everybody on these, on these jobs in, in life. That's just not how life works. But it goes back to, we're all different people. We are. But I do love that when asked about, um, different fan like different ships and things like that and i, I say the sh- ship wars are also a thing like combative fandom behavior i don't understand i'm a multi-shipper the list of ships that i don't like is much shorter it's like two <laughs> I was, compared I, to like the rest I'm... of the show because my my opinion of most ships on once upon a time or is in is usually even if it's not my favorite i usually don't have anything against it like i'm like i don't think i'm there yet you haven't seen like, a lot ship I, but- I- Really... Also, again, I was in the RP fandom where like ships were the forefront True. of the of the of the interactions for the most part. So like, I I've shipped things that cannot and would never have worked in canon. Like, I'm still trying to figure out how people put Regina and Charming together because in my brain that doesn't connect. That works for it, me. 
it does not work for me. <laughs> but see, exactly. We can have different interpretations. It's mm-hmm. fine. But like also but Milan and Aurora, that's a different story. A plus. But I do think also the the main ship war quadfecta for once upon a time. Quadfecta. There's four of them. For once upon a time, All you right. have only met one of them. Dear God. You are missing three of the you you are you are missing. You've only met Swan Queen. There's other ships involved that you haven't met any of the men. I mean, I think I'm okay with that. I mean, yeah. You can stop here. But like, it's because like, I can't, <laughs> I can't name one of the quadfectas without spoiling a lot. So I can't mention, That's I fine. cannot mention that one. But um, the other ones I'm listing by name, which may or may not make any sense to you, are Outlaw Queen and Captain Swan. There's a fourth one that I am not mentioning that I think people can fill in the well, gaps. Well, Captain Swan's going to be Emma and Hook, yeah. but... I keep hearing about Hook because yeah. I'm like, nah, that's gonna happen. You're gonna, you're gonna meet it's Emma. You're gonna meet Hook when we record next week. Um, yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, it's Emma. No, like, yeah. It makes complete Hook makes complete sense. They also the two of them just have very good chemistry with each other. It works really well. But what was the other one? Outlaw. Outlaw. Queen. Outlaw. Outlaw Queen. Outlaw. There is no idea. There is a hint on my wall. Yeah, that doesn't help me. Okay, just saying. But um, I know still doesn't help me. I'm but yeah. So like, uh, you haven't met a lot of you haven't met three of the four no. ships involved in that. Actually, you t- you've met one other. It's, it's, you have yeah. actually met one of the men. Technically, I'm not saying anything further. Uh, <laughs> I love fucking with you. It's the best. I know. It's so good being so vague. Um, but. So with that, like, when asked about Swan Queen and other ships, like, Lana and Jen are both mm-hmm. very good to, like, both of them are very good at the, if you ship it, I think that is phenomenal. Like, that's truthfully how they feel about these things. Like, Lana supports mm-hmm. all of the ships. All She doesn't care. Well, if it brings you joy, it's fine. Exactly. And there's, it's just nothing for them to not, you know, to not support the ships that involve their characters and their fans. Like... Jen, she put this really well. She said, fairy tales are self-identity stories. And when people project themselves into the work that I've done, I think that's a beautiful thing. And I think that that's a good mentality to have. Like, you no, know, Lana's really enjoyed, like, you know, Swan Queen turned into a big LGBTQ movement. A lot of people did a mm-hmm. lot of like fundraising and stuff when the show was going on. So like, she's very happy to have been a part of that. And you know, they, they are good at like the deflect, not the deflecting pretty much of like asking about their relationship through the lens of Swan Queen. Where they kind of say, like, you know, I think the ship is great. I think the fandom is great. But they kind of leave it at that. But people keep pushing. And I'm just like, stop. You kind of ruin that. For, for you do. Actors. That's why we don't they don't go to conventions together anymore at this point. Like that's basically Which can ruin that for everybody then. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I'll never get to see that. Exactly. You know, they were going to go to a convention together. It was going to be the last of the France conventions. Um, mm-hmm. People started calling it the Swan Queen convention. I'm like, this is why they don't go to the same conventions. This is why, to be fair, we mostly get Lon and Bex, which is fine. They're adorable. Um, another one of the video clips that I pulled out was one where Lana just says, Bex, I know you want to lick my face. Um, <laughs> yep, it, that's us. It was, yeah, because it, it was during the pandemic. Um, Lana, Bex, and another actor. Oh, Bex and another actor had, did a, they were doing like uh, Instagram lives all the time. They eventually turned it into like a YouTube series for like three weeks mm-hmm. where they would bring in someone else on like on FaceTime. And they were talking about like what they want to do when the, when like you no know, when things open up when there's a vaccine and things are a little safer, and Bex was like, "Wait, are we saying when this is all over or like when there's a vaccine? Because like I don't want to go out and lick start licking people if I'm gonna get the COVID." And then Lana just goes, "Bex, I know you want to lick me." <laughs> and I was just like, "That's that's their relationship in a nutshell." Which is so crazy for people to latch on so much to Swan Queen when that is right there. Well, I think I think the fact it, it's the fact of there's some there's a reason why people don't latch on to that. I'm not gonna say anything. Oh, I actually can't. Never mind. Say, I actually can't say anything. It would actually spoil a big thing for season three. I actually can't say what. To be fair though, just because people don't doesn't mean I haven't, and it mostly has to do with Lana and Bex. It's just interesting. There's like, the, yeah, there's there's a, there's a reason why that ship doesn't isn't as big and as that's where sh- context clues. That's where con- I don't have the context. That's where context. I don't clues have in. it. There's a reason why that ship isn't as big as it should be. Uh, <laughs> but I do want kind of our last topic because we we have other topics than this, but this episode is already going to be over an hour. Yeah. Um. So I don't think we need to go too much further into things, but I did want to bring in uh, when it comes to the online spaces and media literacy, mm-hmm. fan fiction. 
I still have never read a bit of fan fiction in my life. Um, I see people really loving it, which is great. Mm -hmm. But I'm 30. I'm scared if I get into it now, I will not finish my physical TBR. I mean, that uh, TBR is to be read. It's yeah. the amount of books I need that I own and need to read for people who don't read. Yes, that that is fair. Once you kind of, I mean, I I'm more of a one shotter. I don't. I tend to not read multi chapter fix. I I just I have not that I have yet to find. I'm sure if I looked hard enough, I could find like fix that I really that I love. People do. I, I think it's because when I was writing in the RP fandom, it's it, I was mostly doing short threads. I wasn't doing anything terribly mm -hmm. plotted out. I like the short expediency of like one shots, and I'm mostly looking for for smutty stuff, smutty stuff anyway. And I, I, multiple chapters of smutty stuff can be a bit much, unless it's like a yeah. unless it's like it's a collection of one shots. I kind of like one contained story personally. It's a personal thing. Um, but this is a very timely topic about fan fiction because at the time of recording, uh. It was announced yesterday that a very popular Harry Potter fanfic, um, Manacled, is being picked up by uh, traditional publisher Del Rey, which is an imprint of Penguin Random House. Yeah. Um, it's, I was so confused seeing that. Yeah. It's it's a very popular fanfic, according to AO3, I think it was posted in 2019. Um, it's a Dromini fic, which is the ship of Draco and Hermione. It is... Why are we still doing this? I like, people I don't, I don't know it's so much stuff has been turned into fan has, has been turned into tradi traditional fiction because the way this works the, the original story um was 370,000 words it's massive it's a massive massive fic it's got 7 million hits it's apparently completed which is you know good on her um but the way that th this is this is under the under the the situation of fan fiction being turned into commercial fiction by by the the phrasing is by filing the serial numbers off it takes editing and revision to turn fix into cohesive yeah. books and i do want to go into a little bit before we get into why fanfic is needs to stay free to certain extents um mm -hmm. what makes fanfic legal which is the pillars of fair use this is this really this part is a lecture because I have definition. No, that's that's fine. I, I, I don't know anything about fan fiction. Yeah. For me, it's still just being weirded out that people are still writing fanfic for something like Harry Potter. But that's my disconnect from it. I refuse to be anywhere near it. No, which is totally fair. I'm like this people yeah. people still find enjoyment in everything. Um Yeah, we've learned that on on Book Talk. We really have. Um, but fair use is what keeps fan fiction free, and this is this is my library, and I've done a lot of liter a lot of research into copyright law and fair use because I find this fascinating. Uh, and my definitions are coming from an article or from the page on uh, Columbia University's website. So again, links are available. Um, fair use is the section of copyright law that you know it, it's mostly used for educational purposes, but it has been used mm -hmm. in fandom spaces as well. Um, and the pillars of fair use basically dictate how something can be deemed fair use, meaning you're using it without the copyright owner's permission, basically. Um, your pillars are the purpose and character of the use, which in the case of fan fiction, this pillar covers transformative works. So you're obviously, you're not just writing down transcripts, you're taking the characters and you're putting them in new situations. Mm -hmm. Um, the nature of the copyrighted work, which usually is applied more to nonfiction for educational works, um, because you can't copyright fact. Like that's just that's just a case. You, you facts are not yeah, copyrightable. They fact. they just are. Historical events can't be copyrighted. Like Archduke Ferdinand did die. Yep, he was a sad. Like no one own, no can't one can't change that. No one owns the rights to the story of that. They own they may no. own their their representation of that being they're writing it down. But the the thing of just writing just this the fact is the fact is not copyrightable. Um, the next pillar is the amount or substantiality of the portion portion used. Uh, the amount used is usually relative to the length of the original work, character, settings, plot, etc. But when you start using full chapters of original books or entire scenes of original dialogue, it gets kind of murky. Uh, the rule of thumb here is no more than 10% of your original copyrighted work in its original format should be used. Uh, so my bad impression voiceovers... Uh, wow. Yeah. So my bad impression voiceovers can never be more... like In theory, I would never do a four minute long scene. That's, that's chaotic and difficult. Um, but I would never like for a singular episode, I, I, it would be if like a four minute, 4.2 minute uncut scene would be really pushing the boundaries of what's like allowed for fair use. But like, I, this, I would never do it that way. That's too much. That's too much to do. But this fanfic author wrote almost 400,000 words. But they're only really using the characters in the setting. They're not using like the direct. That's not that. 
like percentage then it's not because the percentage because like we're saying the like original percentage of the original copyrighted work they they would need okay. to be using 10 percent of like the harry potter book is what i'm saying my god just because they've created Ugh. a massively long fic with these characters it's they're not using enough of the of the real they're not using any of the real dialogue i was so long it's i so i don't long. know what that equates to um uh well an average novel like a just basic i think three to four hundred like around the 400 range is about 60,000 words. Okay. Yeah. For 400 pages, it tends to be depending on the printing. Yeah. 60,000 words. 3 400 pages, yeah. I think. So, I man, whatever between there. Whatever that fanfic gets turned into so, is going to be huge. Holy hell. Yeah. The last there, pro- it's not going to be one book. No. It can't be one book. I don't know. Like Priory is not even that long. No, it's not. The last pillar of uh, fair use is the effect of the use on the potential market for or value of the work. Effect is usually related to the purpose of the transformative work. While this is not explicitly stating that fair use content cannot be monetized because fan art exists. Mm -hmm. um, If you are competing with a commercial entity and getting paid for it, then you are essentially affecting the potential market for the original work, i.e. fan fiction for, you know, for a a book series. Um, Basically what that one boils down to, and I'm I'm reading what I wrote word for word because I think it really gets my thoughts here across. Don't bind and sell fan fiction. Bind it for yourself. Bind it as a gift mm-hmm. to a friend. But selling hard copy bound fan fiction, especially fan fiction that you did not write, oh my God, why are we having this conversation? Violates fair use. Not only, especially if you're doing this with fanfic that you did not write, you are actually stealing someone's work. Yeah. And selling it. Like, again, binding it, you know, there's book binding tutorials. It's a fun hobby. People really enjoy it. Or do what we did when I was in middle school. Print it out on printer paper and put it in a three ring binder. But do not make money off of it. Just no. How, wait, so if, if people are being told, hey, this is not okay, what, like, why are people doing it? Because they want physical copies of their, of their favorite fic. Because what's a nice new thing, or not really new, but it's in, in the last couple of years, because it, it, it does get murky with the fanfics being picked up at, by traditional publishers and being turned, being turned into. This is yeah. also the thing is, Fanfics. Well, some Raylo fanfics have been picked up and turned into books. Oh, Hurricane I ha- Wars. I have. Is, is I have some written down. <laughs> the Raylo. I own that one. Just haven't read it yet. Yeah, like that. That's where it gets a little bit murky because they see that they're like, oh, that got turned into a real book. So why can't I turn into this into a book? Like, because they're not the same thing. People mm-hmm. are conflating reading fan fiction is val- the the ideology that reading fan fiction is valid reading, which I, it is. Yeah, if you're reading a 370,000 word fic, that is that's valid reading. Um, you're reading words. You're reading a hundred a hundred word drabble. Also, it's 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 all valid reading. They're conflating that notion with fan fiction and books are the same thing, which they're not. Mm. They're not. Fan fiction is legal because they are inherently not the same thing. We can have traditionally published books that start out as fanfic. But those get edited, those get revised, those go through sensitivity readers. They go through such- Those go through like different world building at that point. Like, because you can't keep the same world building. Exactly. You have to create a whole new world when you're really- Because I'm sure Hurricane Hurricane Wars, like I said, that book, that does not have, I bear guarantee that does not have the same world building as Star Wars. No, it absolutely does not. It can't. It can't. It's not allowed. Like, Like when you're filing the serial numbers off, you're not just changing the names and settings- you are changing the book. You're changing the story mm-hmm. effectively. And like some of like the examples, which is also why Manacled, um, people are like, I don't really know how that's going to work so well because yeah. the storyline of it, it's a post-canon dystopian where Harry Potter dies. So, yeah, so... But it's still the wizarding world, isn't it? It's still, yeah, it's it's just, it's where Voldemort just... How? It, it's where Voldemort wins. That's I've, ne- I've never read it. I'm just going off of the description. So oh, I'm not going to, even when they publish it. No, thank you. I saw a video uh, where someone like asked this really important question of the crux of this story is a, we understand the world. We know how important that character is and what him dying and losing could mean. Yeah. When you take away that aspect, why would I care? No, there's, yeah, that's right. There's no reason to care. If it's not based off of a character who's so important to a world, if the if the story begins the with the whole that, series is named after him. If it's if the story starts with this person dying that I never had the chance to get to know, what is the point? There's no point. Which is which is mm. a totally mm. fair analysis of this. But like Wait, so does it take place No, you don't know where it it's, takes place. It's post- I'm just so confused. It's canon about com- it? My understanding is it's canon compliant up until that point. Like it's up until the point of their okay. final battle. And then 
he dies and things. So it's it's post the series. It's basically meant to be a change. Like it's but it's between okay. the ending, like pretty much the ending of with the, the, that final battle. I don't know. I don't know how far out it goes, but I know it takes place after that. I'm dealing with my own personal like thoughts on it mm-hmm. because 2019. This was after rallying out at herself yeah. for being a horrible person. So for me, I separated myself from this fandom at that point in yeah. time. I, I, I will and say- And I know with, not everybody has. I will say that's the date that was on AO3. I don't know if it was written earlier than if that. it's possibly older. I don't know. All I know is that's the date, that, that's, the date that's on AO3. So I don't know when it, when mm-hmm. it began, if it was on other sites. I have no idea. Because uh, I, I live by the belief that you cannot separate the art from the artist. While the artist is alive. Um, while the artist is alive. Yeah. And so it's, for me, it's my brain actually just trying to comprehend why anybody would write- that after Mm -hmm. because before makes sense yeah we all we all loved it we did before she added herself for being just horrible but now that we know it's really hard for myself and Mm -hmm. i know for a large population to relate to it anymore so even this getting picked up is even weird for me because i'm like i know that there's still fans i know there are but it just doesn't make sense. The to me. weirdest stuff has been picked up, and I, I, I'll link an article that posted stuff. a bunch of different ones that have been fanfic that that started out as fanfics. My favorites are, I mean, like the the love hypothesis was Raylo, um, Fifty Shades of Grey. It was, yeah. Love hypothesis was was Raylo. Oh originally. god, don't even start on Fifty Shades of Grey. Fifty Shades, of Grey. Fifty Shades oh. of Grey was Twilight, and that's my favorite butterfly effect. A uh, butterfly effect. Uh, ever. I love that butterfly effect, it's, but I hate how it ends. It's the best. <laughs> um, <laughs> Have you seen the extended version where um, 9-11 uh, led to the downfall of Ellen DeGeneres? Yes. It's so good. I've seen that. It's so good. Look it up if you haven't. Yeah, look, look, oh up, look up that butterfly effect. It's so funny. Um, my favorite of the weirdest ones is um, okay. the After series, which is uh, was started out as a Harry Styles Wattpad fig. Wattpad fig. I, don't, I need more of these. I, I need more of these. I know nothing about that. Um, let me just, I'll pull up the article. A lot of them were, a lot of them were Twilight fix. Yeah. Um, I just, I was never a fan. Yeah. So yeah I literally in high school was told I wasn't allowed to not like Twilight until I read it. So I read it and didn't like it. Yeah. I, I tortured myself reading that series to tell people I was allowed to say I didn't like it. That's fair. Um, so you've got Beautiful Bastard by Christina Lauren. That's a Twilight, started out as Twilight fic. Uh, we'd know by then by Kirsten Bowling. That's um, that's Star Wars. Uh, a lot of Star Wars, it's, I'm it's, sure. It's mostly tw- it's honestly, I think this entire article was mostly Twilight and Star Wars. Okay, which ones aren't t- Twilight uh, and Star Wars? After, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, that's an interesting one. Point Pleasant by Jen Archer Wood. That is supernatural. Which, based off of the cover, absolutely. Okay, uh, I could see someone liking that. Yeah, let's see. What's funny is there's a lot of Raylo fix that are like witchy books i've noticed like like okay there's like one like like kind of like the contemporary like witch romance looking like kind mm-hmm. of like a lot of them started out as started out as raylo fix which is i I find that funny but gotta change the world building somehow and that's a way to go from sci-fi straight into you know fantasy is makes it is. sense it is magic is lightsabers there you go mm-hmm. I do want to end us on, you know, the idea of like internet and anonymity. We talked about it before and kind of how yeah. that breeds. Cause like we've been talking, it's very safe for us to talk about these fandom experiences from our podcast where people, I mean, you, you, if anyone disagrees with anything we've said, you know, our DMS are open. You can comment on Spotify. We, oh yeah. Please. We're open to critique. We realize that, you know, we may have talked about some of these topics with a level of flippancy. Um, but we're, no, we're open to we're open to critique if people disagree with us. But again, if your disagreement is based on an opinion, say it again. Neither of us are right or wrong. And uh, these are our opinions, but this is also two friends, like close, yeah. very close friends who talk almost daily exactly about these topics. We have a lot. We have a lot of the same views. Yeah, because um, I know if we view something as like Harry Potter, we view that the same. Yeah, like we do, and like it, we have a lot of similar views. Like, you know what you were saying before about, like, remembering that, like, there's a person on the other side of the computer screen. Yeah. The best example I have of that is when I was at New York City Comic Con and I was in line to meet Jennifer Morrison, mm-hmm. um, which was a fun experience in and of itself because she wasn't supposed to be there that day. We literally were driving down and my friend looked at this because she she always went to New York um, and their panel was almost mm-hmm. always Thursday and we usually went on Saturday. Um, and my friend was looking at the schedule and she's like, Jen is still going to be there. Do you want to meet her? And I'm like 
Yes. Uh, so That's no hesitation. No hesitation. Like, none, none whatsoever. So it was, you know, this was 2015. So this was the beginning of season five. This, the fandom is well formed at this point. Um, and I was in line for a couple hours because you know, I asked the guy, I'm like, what time do you think I should get back? And he's like, I would say about two hours before because that way it doesn't, that way you don't get capped, which is, which is fine. So I was on, and then it was like still another two hours once she got there before I even wow. like got, it was, it was a lot of people. So, and she talks with people, which is, I like when people do like, I, I, I'm okay waiting if it means that we are all getting time to speak with her. I felt like that when I met Paolini. <laughs> like that's, you just like it when people have that mentality of like, I, I'm giving up my Don't time. Don't care if the line's long. Yeah. Like, let's like, like, let's just, let's just chat. So, but I was surrounded by people. It was a lot, like, it was a lot of people from different sides of the fandom. You know, I, it was, you know, you had me and evil regal who didn't really care what ship she shipped you had outlaw queen people you had swan you had swan queen people you had captain swan people you had you had rumble people everyone coming at the fandom from different sides but we were having a lovely and wonderful conversation just about a tv show that we all really love because we all have had that thing of like we all feel very isolated because mm-hmm. we don't have a lot of friends that watch the show with, as us so we just like I said, felt the same way with Paolini because no one understands my obsession with that. Exactly. So I completely understand. Like you take away the anonymity of the internet, you that, that pretty much removes the ship war aspect of things. Mm-hmm. And people are just happy to be there and talk to people about their favorite show. So, you know, it's that reminder. The the internet is a singular I mean that that's a singular experience, but like if you met these people in real life, you probably wouldn't act the same way you do online. Thank you all for listening. Join us next time back at our regularly scheduled time to talk more about all things Once Upon a Time and Bob's Burgers. Don't forget to like, rate, and follow the podcast wherever you listen so you can be notified every time we publish a new episode. And follow us at obdyk underscore pod on Instagram and TikTok. This has been an episode of OK, But Did You Know? A TV and media podcast. It was hosted by Lauren and Katie and edited by Lauren.